The day has finally come. Avid has officially released a new version of Pro Tools that has Apple Silicon native support for M1 processing. This is a huge deal because I think a lot of people did upgrade their computers for M1 chips, but we haven't been able to take advantage of that full power as of yet. But the big question is, is it safe to update? Because I actually recommend being quite cautious about updating whenever a new update comes out. I don't like to jump on them right away because sometimes there's errors and you can lose compatibility with your existing sessions. If you're working with clients or have an important deadline coming up, that could be quite disastrous actually. So in this video, we're gonna explore if it seems to be safe to update to Pro Tools 2023.3 yet. So the main thing we need to consider is compatibility. Are our existing plugins gonna be able to work in this new M1 version of Pro Tools? And the answer is kind of, because while we have been waiting for Avid to finally release a version of Pro Tools that has M1 support, the plugin companies that we use and love have sometimes been doing that update ahead of time. So what this really means is that you're gonna to have to do a whole lot of updating on all your plugins. Some plugin companies like FabFilter and Isotope, for example, have already released their M1 updates, but other companies like Plugin Alliance, for example, have not. Now, before you freak out and think, oh no, I've got plugins that aren't M1 supported, I can't update to this new version of Pro Tools, they won't work anymore. Don't freak out just yet. There is a workaround and easy solution to that, but we'll get to that in a second. First, I wanna discuss what happens when you just open up a session without doing any updates and what you'll see as far as plugins working. So when you first click Pro Tools, it takes a little bit to launch. I do think it's a little bit quicker. I was hoping on an even faster launch time, but overall it's definitely faster than the previous version. You'll find the normal boot up dashboard. And then I'm just gonna open up a session from my friends, Folk Villains. The session seemed to load a little bit faster, but I wouldn't say it's that much, but that said, this was a big heavy mix session. Now what will happen if you have incompatible plugins is you'll be greeted with a missing AAX plugin window. It'll list any plugin that Pro Tools doesn't think will work. Now, as you can see, for me, there's a whole lot of them, but I haven't necessarily tried to update all of these, so don't assume that these won't work for you. I recommend taking a screenshot of this list so you can just remind yourself what you need to go update later. Annoyingly, the only solution that Avid offers here is just to go to their marketplace to buy them, but whatever. Click no and your session will launch. Jumping around, it seems to be very responsive and the look and appearance seems to be exactly the same as far as I can tell as well. You'll still see the plugins in your session that don't work. They'll just appear inactive. I wish that, that they could somehow be labeled as uh, incompatible, uh, so you could differentiate between inactive and incompatible plugins in the session, but it gives you the rough idea of what's going on. So from here, I would just have to go and update all those plugins and hope that updates are available for all of those plugins. Unfortunately, that might not be the case for all of them just yet. But what if you need some of those older generation plugins? Well, that is the Rosetta fix. Let me show you. You'll just wanna close out of Pro Tools, go to your application folder, find Pro Tools, and then right click it and go to get info. There will be a little checkbox that has an open using Rosetta option. Click that and now you can relaunch Pro Tools. Doing that will now do exactly what it says. It will now launch Pro Tools using Rosetta instead of the Apple Silicon M1 version. So you're gonna lose out on the speed boost and stuff like that, but on the other hand, it's gonna run just like the previous version did as well. So if you were happy with that, you've still got that, which is really great. All of your old plugins will still work as well. So you can just use that while you're waiting for the updates to come from the plugins that you need. And then once you've updated those to M1, you can take that option back off of Pro Tools and just open using the native support. And you should be running a faster version of Pro Tools from that point forward. Now to conclude, is it safe to update to this version of Pro Tools? I would say yes. I haven't tested that extensively, but a couple days of using it, I haven't run into any errors outside of what's normal. And by that, I mean that it has quit unexpectedly on me and it has frozen on quitting a session as well. But those are also things that happened on most versions of Pro Tools that I've used. It is uh, just as consistently inconsistent as it was before. So I would say it's safe and it makes me sad. <laughs> but I'm gonna try this out. I'm gonna keep running this M1 version of Pro Tools. I've got a perpetual license for it. I'm gonna turn off my updates and this is the one I plan to stick with for the foreseeable future. I think I'm done giving them any more money from this point forward. We'll see what happens down the road. But hope this helped. If you like hearing me talk about stuff like this, please do subscribe and leave a comment down below. That's super appreciated with getting this video out there. and. If you wanna learn more stuff, check out this video. Oh, and one more thing. If you wanna learn how to mix your own songs using the plugins you already own, there's a free mixing workshop called The Standout Mixes down below in the description. So do check that out as well. Thank you very much, bye.